Alright, what's going on, YouTube? We're back with that episode that was up temporarily, and I didn't realize the recording was corrupted. Now, at first I thought it was just the way it uploaded YouTube, they encoded it wrong, and then I was like, okay, well, first we need to shut down this video, so that way, don't, so that way people don't, ha so that way people aren't watching a video, that's a waste of their time, because uh, I didn't realize that at first. Um, cause that's the first time that it happened. Also, I go back to my uh, actual file recording and I find it and apparently, uh, A, it was gone and B, the cache file, whatever left over, um, was useless to try and get it back or whatever. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so fun fun stuff. So, um, that happened, and so I tried to go record it the other day, and then what happens is when I launch the project for RPG, as you can tell, this isn't the actual RPG project, because this is, this is our, pl this is, you would think this is our player, but no, this is actually the AI, this is my test world, test world slash test project, so this isn't the actual, this isn't the right project. Um, so yeah, um, I try and go and open, open the, the real RPG project that I have for the tutorials, for this tutorial series, and at like 55% loading into the, uh, project, it says, some files are corrupt, verify your installation, uh, or, I don't think it said installation of the en engine, but when it said that, I was like, okay, so let me go verify the installation, so I go to Unreal Engine, uh, the version that 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 uh, that the project is on, and I verify and start it back up, and it still doesn't work. Um, and so, it, I mean, the the project doesn't work. So I, I need to figure out what's going on with that. But um, while that's being uh, worked on, probably the FPS will be uh, something tutorials that'll be up a bit more, and probably the Minecraft. So I just thought I'd let you know. Um, but, uh, after that long intro, so one, one actually last little side bit of information, this is the test world and the AI is already made, so I'm not going to show you how to make it, I'm simply going to show you the code for it, but I will kind of demonstrate throughout how to make it if, uh, if it's like some confusing parts or something. So, um, but this is super Im simple, um, uh, so obviously the, the episode previously where we had set up our zombie guy and his animations. Uh, this will work perfectly. Um, you'll just have to uh, create a blueprint, which we should have already done. Uh, and it needs to be, um, you need to create a blueprint. And you need to create a character blueprint and then name it something AI that you'll remember. And then you need to open it. Now, um, if it doesn't look, mm, if it doesn't look like this, not not like this. Sorry, if it doesn't look like this, or if it's not on like an empty event graph that looks like this, if it's not on one of those two, or if it's not on if it's not on this, and it looks like a, just like if it looks like a, someone took took this and full screened it like that. If that's what it looks like, there should be a bar up here, and that says open and full blueprint editor. That's what you need to hit. Um, so yeah, once you hit that, you should see this UI. Um, so what you need to do is we need to you need to click on mesh over here uh, and select um, select the, uh, the whatever zombie guy name we used. Obviously, this is the wrong project, so it's just going to be Ybot for this AI. And then uh, select the proper animation class, um, and you also need to add the components uh, AI perception and pawn sensing and uh... It, you need to do what you do it's like a it's kinda like uh... division um, what you do to or sorry like fractions multiplying fractions and dividing fractions i think i think that's this is the term uh... what you do to one you need to do to the other um, i think i think that's what it is if, if you know what i'm talking about anyways um, so uh, you need to go uh to AI perception or pawn sensing uh, doesn't matter but obviously I'm going to AI perception first you need to go to dominant sense and choose sight then on senses config you need to hit the plus 
it will expand it should expand this if it doesn't obviously you can just click that little arrow and it'll expand it uh, on zero you need to click uh, AI site AI site config expand that expand since and then uh, if implementation AI AI since underscore site isn't selected you should select that um, but uh, these this is default this is default this is default this is default um, and that is default as well also that and um, that's not default but we'll go over that real quick a peripheral vision uh, detect angle that's just um, that's this that's its field of view that's its angle that's this big green cone um, I'm on the pawn sensing because uh, these two work together um, so this is the visual one this is the more variable one um, the more flexible and meteor version of this but they work together so we're using both of them so this needs to be 60 it doesn't need to be 60 it can be different um, I found 60 to work better um, let me just put it that way but yeah so that that's what we're doing um, 60 <laughs> and uh, if you expand detect by affiliation, all three of these need to be checked. Uh, detect uh, enemies should already be checked, I think. Yeah, detect enemies should already be checked. But you also need to check uh, neutrals and friendlies. Um, now, I don't know how that works. I think it works with the uh, tagging system, like uh, enemy or friendly. I, I, don't, I don't know uh, how it detects, but and I, so I don't know which one our player is considered under. And I don't know why that's staying up there. I should have taken that down. That's just a notification from YouTube. Some comments, but um, yeah, it it I I don't understand uh how that works. So like I said, I don't understand uh, or know exactly which one our players considered. I just know that it's actually technically not considered an enemy. Um. But the way we have it set up, um, even, even though it's detecting everything, it's only going to respond to if it sees us. Um, so, yeah, we're good. Anyways, uh, so you need to head over into pawn sensing, and since we use the field of view peripheral vision angle of 60, you need to do that for this. Uh, uh, all of these should be checked. Just make sure everything's double-checked. Uh, sensing interval is what's important, though. This needs to be 0 0.01 because um, that's how quickly it, it senses. If it's 0.5, it's much laggier, it's slower. 0 0.01 is practically instantaneous. Anyways, I'm just going to compile that. Uh, I think everything else is fine. Uh, so I'm going to go to the event graph. And as you can see, not a lot of blueprint coding has happened here. Why is this comment here? I want to delete that. Okay, there we go. Um, that was weird. Um, so yeah, we this is, there's not much blueprint coding here. So what we need to do is um, when you first start a fresh blueprint, it should have event begin play, uh, event actor begin overlap, which I don't need, so I'm going to delete that. Okay, that's not deleting. There we go. Apparently my delete button's broken all of a sudden, and my phone went off. Um, so um, we need to you need to get that by dragging off uh, off of, off of begin play and casting to RPG dude. Uh, obviously that's the name of my character or whatever the name of your character is that you want him to attack. Um, and then off tick we need to sequence because obviously I always sequence my ticks. That's just a habit of mine. Um, anyways, so let's go to the begin play. Uh, off of this, we need uh, to drag off and to just type in pawn, hit enter. This should be what pops up and automatically connects. Uh, we need to drag off of this and promote to variable. It uh, um, this will pop up, except it'll uh, you'll be renaming it like this. Uh, I think in, down here you'll be renaming it. It will say like. Um, new or something, a new variable, I think. Anyways, uh, I renamed it to player, and um, if this is if the execution line isn't already connected, it needs to be. Uh, so off of our sequence, off of our tick, off of our sequence, um, we uh, well, no, let's not go there yet. We we will we'll mess with that later. Um, we actually need to uh, select uh, AI uh, perception, right click. And then expand call function, expand, I believe, AI, 
perception, and then we need to get perceived actors. Uh, so it should look like this. Since to use should be sight, like I have here, since to use should be sight, and then you need to drag off and type in contains, contains item. Hit enter, and this will pop up, and then off of, uh, off of this, you need to just drag right over it player. Obviously, it's already connected, so it's not going to uh, connect. It's just going to duplicate it in its same location. So you need to uh, connect it to player. Then off of this, you can just drag off and just type branch. And then uh, off of the then one, connect to the branch, um, the execution lines, and you should be good. Uh, next thing you need to do, select pawn sensing. Make sure it's selected, otherwise this won't work. Same thing for this down here. Um, I should have mentioned that. Make sure this is selected. Right click, add event, event dispatchers, and on C pawn. You need to drag that onto branches, uh, onto, onto the branch as well. And then we move on to the branch. Now I have this here for debugging purposes, so that doesn't actually need to be here. But true, you need to drag off and just type, type AI move to. It really should t be the first thing that pops up when you type AI. But AI move to, uh, and that's what we want, this one right here. AI move to, the one highlighted. So um, you'll hit enter, and you'll have this. So we're actually going to utilize uh, all, all, all three of these um, location, or these two are, these two are location. This one's just referencing a pawn, but we're going to use these first three. Um, so pawn, you just need to drag off, type self, and get reference to self is what it's called, and just use that. Um, off of destination, well, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, off of target actor, you need to get player. So you can use this one, but I just created, I just drag out the variable and got it again. Uh, drag, drag it out, select get and then dr drug off this uh, connected it to target actor drug off and also get actor location uh, and that's that's what I want so get that and then connect that to destination so pretty much which is what this is doing is double checking uh, this this you you may say, hey, this is pretty much telling it to go to the same place twice. Yes, that is, so that way it's double checking that it is talking about the same thing. That way it's not confused with itself and not talking about two separate instances. It needs to be talking about the same location. If it's not, then as far as I understand, it shouldn't work. Also, give it an acceptance radius of whatever you want. Um, obviously, 5 is good for me, but you could probably do something... Uh, I assume like 30, and so that way he's not super in your way. I don't know. But uh, if he's 5, he's literally like right on you, and he's practically pushing you. He'll never stop moving um, just because of that acceptance radius. Anyways, uh, same thing with this. You may be thinking, well, we're going to the branch twice, and it's practically trying to sense the pawn and, um, well, uh, sense the pawn because it's – getting perceived actors and seeing if our pawn, our character, which is a pawn, contains it. Um, so we, we are doubling down, uh, or doubling uh, our usage of the branch, but that entire, the entire point of that is so that way we're making sure we're talking about the same thing. Uh, also, one is, one is obviously a condition and the other is a, um, um, kind of a condition, but it's a condition within itself. It's more of an execution line. Anyways, like I said, that's how those two work with each other. But that's about it. That's uh, all we need. Um, you hit play. Oh, I forgot one thing. That this is I I messed up on this severely, and I I, I goofed big time, and I was literally losing my mind. I do this about every every single time I make an AI. It wasn't working, and I knew I had all the blueprints right. And what you need to add, if you've gone to any blue, uh, AI, even the simplest two-minute AI tutorial, they've most likely had this in here. It wouldn't work if they didn't. You need to have nav mesh bounds volume. Now, I already have it, but you can just drag it in, size it up, and I believe mine is, yeah, mine's sized up so that way it's uh, it um, reaches 
all of the there we go I want this I just want to scale it up a bit more I just want to get to the top of here should be oh that's the wrong thing I selected that all of a sudden I selected the floor I'm the smart one there we go can't seem to see it hmm um nav mesh bounds volume that's it I was severely confused like what is going on okay there we go so now it's sized up so that way he can go pretty much everywhere that I can and we're good um, so now that that's there um, by the way hit P uh, to, to toggle this it doesn't matter what you have selected uh, as far as I know it as long as you hit P it will show you if you have a nav, nav mesh uh, in your world um, that's the only application I know it for. Maybe it works for other bound volumes. Anyways, um, so if we hit play, and uh, you know he's obvious, we obviously can't see him, even though he turned he turned his head to look straight at us. Now the reason uh, I know this is very uh, unimmersive and quote unquote fourth wall breaking, if you will. The reason that this doesn't work, a we're doing it in blueprints. Uh, if if we were doing this in uh, C++, there is code to attach um, the pawn sensing and the AI perception to a bone or to a socket, which would allow for when he moves and looks at us to be a much more immersive AI. So that's a thing if you want to do um, that you can totally, quote unquote, dual boot or uh, uh, cross in between using uh using blue blueprints and C++ if you want to do that. That's totally a thing. You can look that up. Um, but uh, that's that's I just wanted to cover that. So obviously um, we're not in his field of view, but if we get just about here, uh, he'll start chasing us. Now I have set his walk speed to 300, and that is a perfect walk speed for him to stop moving once he's like right on us. Now obviously he doesn't attack us because we haven't set that up. We will set that up in a future episode, but or I set that to 30, not 300. But I do want to set that a little bit more. I want to set it to like 90. I want to say. Um, but you can you can mess with it however close you want them to be, and you can see how the acceptance radius is. See, I I may just go full out 150 because it's still really close. Anyways. So that's this tutorial. Um, if you have any issues with this or any issues with any other tutorial um, in this series, uh, please put it in the comments because I would love to be able to help you because um, I, I, I think I can. So I think I can. I'm like the little engine that could. Uh, so yeah, please, please leave it in the uh, comments if you are having issues with anything in this series. And uh, like always, uh, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.